Okay, so this is an introduction to nutrients, which are a really important part of uh, chemical oceanography. So these are the, one of the things that really determine where in the ocean we get life and where we don't get life. Um, so they're an important thing to, to understand what distributes, what determines the distribution of, of elements throughout the uh, throughout the oceans. So first of all, um, what uh, yeah, next slide. What are what are um, nutrients? Well, basically any element uh, that is essential for life to to occur. So this is a, a periodic table. Uh, this is basically for astrobiologists to have a look at. So it basically shows, uh, I guess, in the, the top left hand corner of each element symbol. So you can see here the red up for, for hydrogen here, the top left hand corner. That's basically where that element is produced. So that's not really relevant for us. So I'll just um, cover all those over. Um, and over on the other side here, we can see what they're used for in life. So the reds are elements which are absolutely essential for all life. So carbon, um, obviously we're all carbon-based life forms. Uh, uh, and hydrogen, so those hydrocarbons that we're all made of, um, we, those, we wouldn't exist without those. But we also need uh, bits of nitrogen, bit of oxygen, bit of uh, sulfur, a bit of phosphorus in all of the are kind of the things that make up us, because without those, we couldn't really exist. Uh, but it's not just those major elements um, that, are, that, are, um, that are essential. There are lots of other things that are essential as well. So we need some sodium and, and magnesium. We need cal calcium and potassium. Um, and we also need some trace elements. We need things like iron and, and copper and um, tungsten, bizarrely. Um, so almost all of the periodic table, at least the top half of the periodic table, in some way is essential for life uh, to occur, or at least essential for some processes within cells to occur. Um, but we're really going to be looking at some of the major nutrients uh, for uh, this introduction. So we're going to be looking at nitrogen and phosphorus. Uh, and just to point out that uh, these elements are not distributed uh, across the oceans in the same way that uh, the components of salt are distributed. Um, so this implies that they have a very short residence time compared to the mixing time of the ocean, uh, which you may remember from a previous uh, lecture. But you can see that over in the surface of the ocean, at least the concentrations of, in this case, nitrates, is very low. Okay, we can see that concentrations are low in the um, uh, open ocean. We might have some sources of nutrients around the margins of the ocean, and in some places like the Southern Ocean, we also might have lots of nitrate left in the surface ocean. Um, so the, the distribution is, is quite uh, different to that of the elements that make up salts. Uh, and that means the concentrations are also quite low because that can kind of explain the short residence time. Okay, so the residence time is the content divided by the fluxes, and the contents for most um, uh, nutrient elements are quite quite low. So you can see phosphorus and nitrogen less than one part per million of um, of of the ocean is uh, are these elements. Um, and uh, as I've mentioned, they behave in a non-conservative way. So they're, they're, their concentrations can change through time and spatially throughout the ocean. And what are they used for? So they're essential for life. So they basically make up parts of things that are essential for cells to work. So if you look at the, the molecule over here on the left, this is DNA. And you can see the DNA is made up of these nucleic acid, kind of like chain thingies. And if you look very closely, you can see that those are made up of phosphorus groups and there are nitrogens in these as well. Um, and uh, so without those um, key elements, nitrogen and phosphorus, uh, we wouldn't get uh, DNA. We also wouldn't get other components of, of cells. So in fact, this is a cell wall, okay, kind of zoomed in in a cartoon form. And each of the, the, the cell walls are made up of these kind of like lipid kind of chain thingies. And there's a zoom in of one of these. And you can see that they have this phosphorus group on. So without any phosphorus, we wouldn't have cell walls, and without cell walls, life would be problematic, uh, to say the least. Okay, so um, an introduction now to just very quickly how these things get moved around in the ocean and, and, and how they get incorporated into, how their concentrations may vary throughout, in this case, a simple water column. So uh, if you look over here on the, on the left, see nutrients might be added to the ocean by some mechanism in here. It's basically them running down a river, uh, and entering the ocean. That's not the only way that nutrients get into the surface ocean, but uh, it is one way. 
Um, and if there are any nutrients that are available in the, the surface ocean, uh, life will make use of those. So they'll be uptaken into the organic material of plants. Again, much like, much like we add kind of fertilizers to fields to make plants grow. Uh, plants or algae won't grow in the ocean unless there are some nutrients. That means that those elements, those dissolved nitrogen and phosphorus and I guess carbon as well, they get incorporated into the organic matter of the, the, the algae. So into the cell walls, into the DNA, into the, into the proteins and, and the molecules within the cells. Um, so the plants then take up those key nutrient elements um, and remove them from the available dissolved kind of pool of nutrients in the surface water. Um, now, the key thing is that these elements are constantly being recycled. So um, when those plants die, uh, they might start sinking down through the water. So the algae will sit down or maybe they get those algae get eaten by larger animals, by zooplankton and produce basically kind of larger lumps of organic material. Now, some of that organic material will sink down into the sediments and the nutrient elements will then be locked away in the sediments. But some of this material is broken down by bacteria and as the organic material is broken down, those nutrient elements are added back into the, the, um, the water. So added initially back into the deep water and that deep water might upwell into the surface ocean. So this basically is removing processes, pumping nutrients, removing them from the surface ocean, taking them out into the deep ocean uh, and then bringing them back. So this explains why the surface concentration of nutrients is low, okay, because they're constantly being removed by plants uh, although they're being added by other processes, either runoff from the continents, maybe production in situ, or upwelling of deep water that's got enriched nutrients because organic matter is decaying in that deep water and uh, nutrients are being added back to it. So uh, that, that process of, of, of removal from the surface ocean can explain why must, much, much of the surface ocean is got low concentration. So we can see here that these are uh, concentrations in micromolar uh, of nitrogen over this side and phosphorus over this side. Uh, and you can see that the, the, the spatial patterns of these look very similar. It's because large parts of the ocean, we are removing uh, nutrients. So the concentration is very low by any life that occurs. Uh, you can see that nutrients might be being added in some places along these coastlines. I'm going to think about how that's done. There's a little plume of nutrients maybe coming out here in the Amazon River. Uh, uh, but in other places, there are high nutrients. So nutrients might be being added to these places by other processes. So that might be, in this case, upwelling. Okay, but you can clearly see that the, the, there is a spatial pattern that's maybe driven by this, this, this biological cycling, but it's also limiting where uh, life can occur. We'll come to that in a bit. Uh, but looking at uh, the depth profile in the ocean now. So if we basically, rather than make a map of the surface concentrations, if we take one of these uh, uh, arrays of, of sample bottles, we lower it down to the water column and then measure the nutrient concentration with depth. You can see the surface concentrations are typically very, very low, almost zero. And that's because any nutrients left in the, in the water, they get used by life. And then that life gets kind of like Past, that organic matter gets passed through the food web and exported down into the deeper waters where the basically the organic material gets broken down by bacteria and the nutrients get released into, um, into the water column as these inorganic uh, nitrates and phosphates. So that, that might explain this part of the profile here where we've got low in the surface water and then high concentrations of, of nutrients and depth. Okay, this is really in contrast to the concentration profile you might expect for a salt or uh, element or a conservative element, which you might expect to have relatively uniform concentration with depth. So this distribution of nutrients, we can see here, this is nitrate, for example, this quite closely matches where life is able to occur. Um, so it's a, maybe a little bit counterintuitive from what I just said. So I've said that life is removing nutrients in these regions where we've got low nutrients. But if you look at the maps, so this is a map of surface uh, chlorophyll A measured from satellite, and this is that converted into amount of biomass being produced. Um, so this is a map of where the life is in the ocean over on the, on the right. Uh, and you can see that actually in these regions, which I've said nutrients are being removed, that's there's actually not a lot of life going on there. We're actually where nutrients are abundant, uh, there is a lot of life. So it's rather than uh, the, uh, there's a kind of a, 
uh, a feedback loop here in terms of the, the, the life in the ocean determines the removal of nutrients from the surface, but the availability of those nutrients left behind in the surface in turn determines where life could happen. And that's because in these regions, so in the Southern Ocean down here, or maybe along the equator or in the North Atlantic, uh, there's enough mixing with the deep water, so water being brought to the surface, or places where you can see water being kind of like uh, added uh, from the land, which is bringing a source of nutrients. And in these hot spots, we can see that life is able to thrive because we have lots of available nutrients. So there's this idea that uh, nutrients, we need nutrients for life to, to happen, but it's not just that simple. We don't just need nutrients, we need all of the nutrients. So even if we have lots and lots of nitrate in the ocean, uh, we would still need phosphorus, uh, um, phosphate um, to be available as well. So kind of the analogy I like to think of is the kind of crispy duck pancake. Uh, you need all of the components. You need the plum sauce, you need the, the, the crispy duck, and you need the little strip, whatever that is. Uh, vegetables uh, to make your crispy duck pancake. Without these things, your crispy duck pancake would not exist. You need all of these things, uh, so you need all of the nutrients for life to occur. So in places where you are missing maybe one nutrient, uh, you could still have all of the others kind of accumulating in the water, but no life would be able to take them out because you don't have that last crucial element. Okay, so that's uh, an introduction to nutrients, what they are, maybe a little bit about how they're moved around the ocean, why some places have got high nutrients and some places have got low nutrients, and critically, uh, why nutrients can, can limit the uh, amount of life that can go on. Okay, right, so that is hopefully, oh yes, and also uh, I guess if you have too much of these nutrients, so I guess this is the idea that I guess you need some nutrients for life, this pattern here, okay, is determined by the availability of nutrients. But if you have too much nutrients, then you can have too much uh, production of organic material in the water column. You can have too much life being produced. Uh, and that can be bad for a number of reasons. So we could, we could have basically coastal pollution, uh, adding nutrients to the, the water column. That might cause us to have these horrible algal blooms, which have all kinds of consequences for uh, the toxicity of the water, but also the oxygen um, that's remaining behind once all this organic matter decays. Um, so there you go. Nutrients are important, but they can also be not so good if there are too much, or too many of them, too much, too many, too much. Anyway, a lot of them is bad, some is good. Okay, right. That is the end of the, this is the real end of the introduction to the thing. Okay, there we go. And, 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 okay, end of show. Okay, right, stop.